So we're probably going to wrap up chapter 8 this morning. And Monday we'll have a review and work an example problem on Monday, getting ready for the third midterm on Wednesday. And then um, we'll talk about the symposium, which is a week from today, a little later this morning. I thought about erasing the board, and I thought, I don't know, it's so, so beautiful, why should I erase it? <laughs> so everything I talked about in the first class meeting is on the board, okay? And I was also worried about our board problem last time, trying to keep the board clean. Well, we, we solved that problem, I think. The erasers are now erasing correctly, so I think we're good to go. Okay, so let's go back and look at chapter eight, what we've done so far. Chapter 8, internal flow in a tube. Okay. What we did is we found H, then knowing H, we can find the temperature variation along the tube axis, T mean, and we can find the heat transfer by convection in the tube. So to make life a little easier, I've put together a little decision tree here that will help you to decide how to find H and Q, and I'll add one more, T mean as a function of X. Because as we said many times before, chapter six, seven, eight, and nine, the big question is how do I find H, the convection heat transfer coefficient? So, pretty much in every one of those chapters, one of the first things to do is find the Reynolds number. Chapter seven, is it laminar flow or turbulent flow or MEX flow? There's a magic Reynolds number, 500,000. Chapter eight, find the Reynolds number. Is there a magic Reynolds number? Yes, 2,300. Laminar flow, turbulent flow. Okay, so first question, chapter eight, Check the Reynolds number, laminar or turbulent. Uh, let's do turbulent first because it's, it's the easier of pretty much kind of, of any of these. Wherever you see an equation number on these guys, that is to find H. Arrow points to H. So turbulent flow, we're going to use equation H60. Even though in the textbook there are, there's another equation, 861, we're going to use equation 860 from the 8th edition. Now, it doesn't matter if the flow is fully developed or not. Use equation 860. It doesn't matter if we have constant wall surface temperature or constant heat flux at the surface use equation 860. So there's only one choice in turbulent flow. Now, let's go to laminar flow. If the flow is laminar, there's another decision to make. Did the problem say constant surface heat flux or constant surface temperature? Okay, got it. Take the easier one first. If the surface heat flux is constant, we use equation 850 to get H, if we need H. If we need it. Many times we don't need it, but that's where you get H. Now, once you get H, what's the next step? I want to find these two guys. Okay, go to the equations under the single asterisk. Here, okay. Do you want to find T? Okay, so this is T. If you put an L here, 
This is teaming out. Let's just do that for right now. Or you can rewrite that in this way, t mean at any x equal t mean in plus q s double prime p over m dot c p times x. Okay, that's how you get t mean. By the way, yeah, p is a perimeter, circular tube pi d. T mean in, get T mean out. Now, get Q here, you got a choice. You can, the easy way is if you're given QS double prime, go ahead and multiply it by the surface area of the tube, pi DL. Or you can also say Q dot, Q equal M dot C sub P delta T. T mean out minus T mean in. Okay, so that's, we go left, laminar flow, constant surface heat flux, equation 850, find H. Okay, so I think we've got all that. Now, let's take the middle route. Laminar flow, constant tube, surface temperature, got it. Now we've got to make another decision. Is it fully developed velocity, fully developed temperature? Is it fully developed velocity but not fully developed temperature? Is it not fully developed velocity and not fully developed temperature? Because the equation for H is different. Either equation 855, equation 857, or equation 858. Then how do you find, for that case, how do you find Q and T mean X? A lot of times, I'm, I'm, or T mean out. Okay, double asterisk, okay. Double asterisk, okay. You wanna find Q, here's your choice. M dot C sub P delta T, or Q equal H bar A S delta T log mean, where delta T log mean is that. If you want to find the temperature uh, at the uh, outlet, here it is right here. Okay. And you could also find the temperature anywhere by putting X in place of L. So you would replace the L with an X if you want to find the temperature halfway down the tube. That would be T mean at X, just like up here. T mean at X. Replace X with L. X, L. Now, for turbulent flow, we didn't mention this, but for turbulent flow down here, once you get H bar, double asterisk here, use these equations to get Q and the temperature, mean temperature of the fluid. Double asterisk over there. So this is kind of like the roadmap in chapter eight, pretty much this is chapter eight in a nutshell. This is what chapter eight is all about. Circular tubes, internal flow. Could be laminar, could be turbulent. If it's laminar, decisions to make. Is it constant tube surface heat flux or constant tube surface temperature? If it's constant tube surface temperature, decision time. Is it a yes, yes, a yes, no, or a no, no for fully developed? Yes, 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 no, no, no. 
pick the right H equation. If you need H, put in the equations over here to find Q and the temperature. Okay, any question on that little guy before we go on then? Okay, so now we uh, look at an example of that. This example is going to be engine oil in a circular tube. Here's the Gibbons. The engine oil comes in the tube at a temperature of 25 degrees C, mass flow rate one half kilogram per second. The tube is 10 meters long with a 25 millimeter diameter. Here's a big clue. The tube surface temperature is held constant at 100. The oil is being heated from 25 up because the tube's at 100. Find T mean out and Q. Okay, find T mean out and Q. So, step number one, I need the Reynolds number because that's my first decision up here. Is it laminar? Is it turbulent? I need the Reynolds number. To get the Reynolds number, I need the properties. To get the properties, I need a temperature. What temperature? Oh, the average fluid temperature is a good choice. T mean in plus T mean out divided by two. My problem, of course, is I don't know T mean out. So you know what, I'm gonna say, I think it might be coming out close to 100. Okay, I don't know, that's a reasonable guess, I don't know. Two and a half centimeters is what, one inch? How long? Oh man, 30 plus feet? Yeah, 10, meter, 10 meters from here to that wall, one inch. Okay, so what can I do? I'm gonna guess it goes out at 100. T mean bar is 62 and a half. I go to the back of the book, I, I use 340K. If this would be an exam situation, you would go to the nearest table entry. Don't interpolate on an exam, time's too precious. So go to the nearest table entry for the properties. And 340 is in the table. This is not gonna give you 273 plus this won't give you 340. So you just get the closest table entry. Okay, um, I'll, I'll show you the properties as we go along then. Okay, Reynolds number in terms of mass flow rate, here it is. 4.5 pi d mu, back of the book, 0531. 480. Oh yeah, it's laminar flow, it's a lot less than 2,300. If I got a turbulent flow there, I would have to ask myself, boy, this is oil. And it's 25 degrees, room temperature. I wouldn't think it was going to be turbulent because typically oil is not going to be turbulent. Sometimes it will be, but typically it's not turbulent. So if I, if I get a turbulent answer on homework or midterm, I'm thinking, I better check one more time and make sure I didn't put down 0.531 here or something. Okay. Water in a pipe or tube, almost always turbulent. It's hard to get laminar flow in, in a pipe for water. Air, oh, it's hard to get laminar flow in air. I expect turbulent flow with water and tubes and air and tubes. Oil, I expect laminar flow. If I get turbulent flow, I'm gonna check my numbers to make sure I did the thing right. Okay, so now I know. Laminar flow, constant tube surface temperature. Okay, I want H bar. Laminar flow, got it. Constant tube surface temperature, got it. Next choice, three decisions. Yes, 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 no, no, no. Okay, I need to calculate X fully developed. So my X fully developed then right here. This is the equation for velocity, 0.05, Reynolds number, times diameter, here they are, 6 tenths meters. 
fully developed for temperature profiles. Same thing, 0.05 times Reynolds times D, but now you stick Prandtl number on it. So take the answer for this guy, 0.6, multiply it by Prandtl number for oil, 795, 480 meters. Not even close. Is 0.6 less than one tenth of 10 meters? L is 10, one meter? Yeah, it's less. Yes, answer is yes. Is 480 less than one meter? No. Okay. I've got a yes, no. I go over here. Yes, no. Use the equation 857 to get H. Okay, there it is from the textbook <clears throat> in your notes from last time. Um, <clears throat> I, 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 know, I know K, I know D, I know L, I know Reynolds, Prandtl, I know everything. If you want to, you can calculate what's called the Graz number. The Graz number's right here and right here, these two guys. It's 954, and then put 954 here and 954 in there to the two-thirds power. If you do that, you get H bar 92.5 watts per square meter K. Okay, I got H bar, but that's not what I'm trying to find, really. The problem said find T mean out in Q. Okay, next step. Once I get H bar from the decision tree here, I now want to find these two guys. To find these two guys, I go down here and say double asterisk, double asterisk, here, here, T mean out, he's the guy I want. So, uh, there it is, T mean out equal TS minus TS minus T mean N, exponential minus perimeter pi D times L times H bar M dot CP. Here's the H bar, 92.5, put it right there. T mean out, 30.1. Gosh, it came in at 25 and the tube surface is 100. And when it comes out, how far down the tube? 10 meters? It only went up by five degrees C? I'm a poor guesser. I, I'm, I'm pretty bad. I guessed it came out at 100. Not even close. It came out at 30. So what I say in the problem, whether it's homework or an exam, I would repeat the above procedures because I guessed T mean out incorrectly. So now I put 30.1 in there and I go and repeat this procedure one more time to get a more accurate T mean out. Don't do it for homework, don't do it on exams, but this is what you do in the real world, of course, until you converge to what you feel comfortable with. Okay, so now, once you got that, now life becomes easy here. Here's your choice, double asterisk. You wanna find Q, take your choice. They both work, they'll give you the same answer. I'll take the easy way out, m dot c sub p delta t, 5294 watts. Okay, so, last time in class we worked a turbulent flow example. It was water, I think. So last time we worked a turbulent flow example in class, example. Today we worked a laminar flow problem and I wanted to make it where you had to make a decision down here what to do with the yes, no guys, okay? Okay, so any question on that guy then before we go on? All right, good. Now, let's take a look. All right, I'm going to, I need space here, so I'm going to erase this. Okay.
it's time to look at something called the overall heat transfer coefficient. Uh, and we'll define it first. I'm going to take an example here. Um, This is a two radius R1 radius R2. The temperature in the tube of the fluid is T mean. The temperature outside the tube is T infinity. And we have H on the outside and we have H on the inside. And this is our tube. Conductivity K, thermal conductivity K. So we have a tube carrying a fluid whose temperature is T mean. And on the outside, there's a fluid which is blowing over the tube. Its temperature is T infinity. And so we want to uh, find Q. So to find Q, We go back, well, let's do it this way first. I'm going back to chapter three. One, two, three. Three resistors, what are they? The inside tube surface has convection. The outside tube surface has convection. There's conduction through the tube wall. Okay. So assume the fluid is hot and the outside air is colder. So this would be T mean, the temperature of the fluid in the tube. This is T infinity, the outside temperature of the fluid, could be air. This is the resistance on the inside of the tube, one over H inside, A inside. This is a resistance on the outside the tube, one over H outside, A outside. Chapter three. This is the resistance of the tube, natural log R2 over R1 divided by two pi K of the tube, L. This is the heat flow from hot to cold, Q. Okay, so that's chapter three. We work problems like that in chapter three. But in chapter three, the author said for homework, for instance, oh, by the way, um, H on the inside is uh, 165. Well, nobody in the real world tells you, the engineer, what the H is on the inside. You gotta find it yourself. And in chapter three, they said, you know, H outside is given. Mm, yeah, it was given in chapter three, but in the real world, you've got to find it yourself. So we're, we're combining these chapters now. That's the whole point near the end of the semester, to combine things that we have pieces now in our library, combine them to get more complex solutions. So this is um, chapter three. Outside. This is chapter seven. Inside, this is chapter eight. The resistor diagram, that's chapter three. 
the equation comes from chapter three. How, no, chapter three, how do I find Q? I take the hot temperature minus the cold temperature. and divide it by the sum of the resistances in series. And of course, if you want to find H inside, you'd go over there and do that calculation on the decision tree. They invent a shorthand notation for this equation, though. The shorthand notation is um, UI AI TM minus T infinity. That capital U is called the overall heat transfer coefficient. What is the um, overall heat transfer coefficient? Uh, what's it comprised of? Okay, convection on the inside, convection on the outside, conduction through the tube wall. Okay. Why do we invent something like that? Because we go back to chapter one and we say, what was Newton's law in chapter one again? Well, let's make it this. Oh yeah, that, that was chapter one. And that H, we gave it a name. We said, we're going to call that guy the convection heat transfer coefficient. We made it up. It's nothing came down from calculus. We made it up. That's what H is. Now we say, you know what? And, and this was only for, for one surface. Now if we've got multiple convection coefficients and maybe conduction, we say, you know what? Let's, let's don't use H anymore because this is now overall three things, three resistances, overall, overall. We're going to call it capital U. Okay, fine. That's where it came from. We made it up because it's useful to us. And you say, well, what is U? Well, look at the equation here. U I A I is equal to one over Now, you can show this. It doesn't matter whether you put an I inside or an O outside. It doesn't matter what you put here. It's going to come out correct. You can put U outside A outside or U inside A inside. That, that guy there is called the UA product. And engineers that work with heat exchangers use that a lot because every heat exchanger involves something in tubes and flow of a fluid over it. So it, it combines conduction through the tube wall. <laughs> What if, I, what if I put insulation around that tube? Insulation around the tube. Add another resistance here for the insulation. That's all you do if that tube's insulated. So, yeah, that, that's, that's what it allows you to, uh, to do. You, you can expand this to whatever you need. So, 
in the real world, the engineers that design heat exchangers talk a lot about the UA product because that's how they define a heat exchanger uh, for overall heat transfer coefficient, the UA product. Okay, let's see, anything else on that? I don't think so. Any questions on that guy then? So the, the point being now near the end of the semester, we're gonna combine a lot of chapter seven, eight, and nine stuff with chapters three stuff, and maybe even radiation, chapters 12 and 13. We'll be working example problems in class, which are combine all those modes of heat transfer in problems, because that's the real world. We go back to our library, and we say, for the inside, what do we do? Here. For the outside, what do we do? Go to the equation for the outside. It's straightforward in your notes. If it's a square tube, what do we do? It's in your notes for the outside. So that's what we're going to do, combine these guys together. Thank you.